In this video, I'm going to explore how to create tables in Google Sheets in the same way that you create tables in Excel. Now, what I mean is that in Excel, you can click anywhere in your data and go to Insert Table. You just have to confirm your range here, click on OK, and then it applies all this formatting. And there's lots more functionality apart from the formatting that you get with tables but how much of that functionality is available in Google Sheets. Well, let's start off with this formatting with the banded rows. You can do that in Google Sheets. What you need to do is click somewhere in the data, go up to the Format menu, Alternating Colors, and then you get this Alternating Colors task pane on the right of your screen. You can say whether your data has headers and you can choose a color scheme. Once you're happy with everything, you can just click on done. Now if I add a new record at the bottom here, you can see that it automatically includes the formatting. So in that respect, things are pretty much the same. The other thing you get in Excel is when you scroll down within a table, you can see that the column headings stay visible on the screen. Now, if I do that in Google Sheets, that doesn't happen, not by default anyway. The way around it is to select a cell within the row that you want to stay on the screen when you scroll down, then go to View, Freeze, and then if I choose this option up to row three, that will freeze the first three rows. So now when I scroll down, I get the same effect as I've got over here. The next thing you get in Excel tables are these filter buttons, which allow you to filter your data. You can do that in Google Sheets. All you need to do is click somewhere in the data, go to data, create filter, and you get the little buttons on each column that allow you to apply a filter. So for example, say I wanted to filter for Glasgow transactions, I'd clear and then scroll down this list, tick Glasgow, click on OK. And there we are, I've got my three Glaswegian transactions. If I clear that filter, select all, click on OK. I'll just make this one Glasgow as well. And then I'm gonna add another record and I'll make this Bristolian transaction and let's apply that same filter for Glaswegian transactions and disappointingly it includes the Bristol transaction it's like the filter hasn't recognized that we've typed in a new record so how do I get around that well what you can do again click somewhere in your data go to data filter views create new filter view. And up here on this dark bar at the top of your spreadsheet, it says name and range. So we'll call this filter transactions. And you can see that it's automatically expanded the range to include our new record, which is good at the moment. But if I add another new record, make that one Bristol as well, you can see that I have to go in here and manually update the range. These filters are not dynamic. They don't include new rows as you add them. It would do that in an Excel table. Let's go back to Excel. With an Excel table, you can give the table a name. If I click into the table, I go to Table Design. You can see the default name is Table 1. Let's call this transaction underscore data. So for example, if I wanted to add up the revenue column, I could say equal sum, type in the name of the table. You can see it appears in the IntelliSense list. Open a square bracket and then choose the column I want to add up. And it will do the calculation for me. Now that's incredibly useful if you're trying to do this formula on another sheet, it means you don't have to go over to this sheet and make that selection. Can we do anything like that 
in Google Sheets. You definitely don't get quite the same functionality. But what you can do is you can create a named range. And the way to do that is to go up to data, named ranges, and then add a range. And we'll call this range revenue. Now the range that we are referring to will start in F4. So I click on this little select data range button and then click in the relevant cell. And then to include the whole of column F, I say colon F, click on OK, and then done. So now, if I want to do the same calculation that we did in Excel, I say sum revenue, and it would add up the values in those cells. Now, if we look back at our named ranges pane over here, you can see that the revenue range is F4 to F1002. So this is something again that's different to Excel. By default, you only have 1002 rows in your sheet. If I scroll down to the bottom, I can add X number of rows. So if I click on add there, it takes me down to 2002. If I edit this here and put in F4 colon F and then done, you can see now it extends the range from F4 through to F2002 rather than 1002. Back to Excel and let's look at this revenue column. I'm actually going to delete it or we'll recreate it. Get rid of that formula as well. So I put in revenue, automatically becomes part of the table. And if I did a calculation here, quantity times price, and press enter, you can see that it automatically copies the formula down the rest of that column. How does Google Sheets work in that respect? Again, I'll delete that revenue column and I'll add the revenue column back in. You can see automatically gets the formatting, but the filter does need adjusting. You can see the boundary of the filter here with this green border. So up here, I need to change the last column from E to F, and that extends the boundary of the filter. So to the revenue column, I would say equals quantity times price. And if I press enter, I get this little autofill suggestion. Now to actually complete the autofill, I can either tick on this little button here or use control enter on my keyboard. It does need a little bit of formatting, but you can see it's copied the formula down. But if I add a new record, let's just put in a quantity and a price. You can see it hasn't automatically copied the formula down. If we do the same thing over in Excel, it is going to automatically copy the formula down. So how do we replicate that behavior in Google Sheets? Well, delete the formulas that we currently have in that column. And the formula we're gonna write is gonna use a function called array formula. And all we have to do is write our formula that we want to spill down into the rest of this column. Now our formula is gonna be all of the quantities times all of the prices. So I'm gonna say D4 colon D times E4 colon E. I'll close the bracket and press enter. And you can see it copies the formula down. But you'll also notice if we scroll down that it's performing the formula on all of the rows in your sheet, even if we have no data in those rows. Now to hide those zeros, we can use a little if statement. We can say if D4 colon D equals an empty text string, then return an empty text string. Otherwise, return the formula that we want to perform. I'll put another close bracket at the end there, press enter. And now that gets rid of those zeros where we don't have data. 
But if I add a new record, let's say quantity is eight, the price is 10 pounds. You can see it does now perform the calculation. Still need to apply some formatting, but we've got close to the functionality in Excel tables. Last thing I want to look at is the fact that in Excel tables, you can include a total row. So I've gone to the table design tab and I'm going to tick total row here. You can see at the bottom of the table, we now have a total for the revenue. And if I was to filter based on branch, you can see that it performs the calculation based on your filter. Let's try Belfast and Brighton. Now elsewhere in this row, you can also perform other calculations. You might want to find the average price. So I can just select my calculation from a drop down list. Now we don't have this functionality in Google Sheets, but let's see what we can do to get close to it. I'm actually going to put the total row above my data. That's one of the annoyances of the total row in Excel is it's below your data. And if you have lots of data, you're always scrolling down to see the totals. So I'll write a little row heading up here in A1 total. Let's apply some formatting here. We're gonna have to rename the revenue column because we deleted it earlier on. You go to the data tab on your menu, named ranges, revenue, is currently equal to hash ref. That's because we deleted the revenue column. But if I edit this and then click on select date range, the first cell is going to be F4 and it's going to go down to the bottom of the sheet. So I'll say colon F, click on OK, click on done. Now the function I'm going to use to add up the revenue column is the just close down this name range task pane to give us a little bit more room. It's the function I'm going to use is called subtotal. And subtotal has two mandatory arguments, function code and range one. To learn about function code, go down here and click on learn more. And that will give you a little page that explains what the codes do. So nine sums one averages two counts i want to add stuff up so i'll put in nine comma and then range is the range of cells you're performing the calculation on and we've called that range revenue so if i close the bracket press enter apply a bit of formatting there let's see what happens if we apply a filter clear I'm going to say Belfast and Bristol click on OK and you can see that this then updates based on the visible records okay that's all I wanted to cover in this video hopefully that's useful if it is please subscribe give me a thumbs up I'll see you next video